Oh, everybody. Hey, y'all, everybody. Welcome. We are all here. We are inside the Wix Miami office. It's so nice to be here with all these amazing people. Y'all can't see it, but we are all sitting on top of each other. There's a million people here. Ori, y'all, everybody say hello. Hey. Ori is here, and he has an amazing presentation that he wants to, not a presentation, a demonstration of Wix code. This is going to be a beginner to maybe interme intermediate uh, demonstration, and we're just going to jump right in it. Uh, Uri, he needs no introduction to you people. You people, we, the community, know who Uri is. Uri, it's all yours, brother. Thanks, Brett. Okay, so hi, everyone. Uh, like Brett said, it's going to be a basic, uh, I thought it would be a workshop. Let's see if we can try and squeeze it in. So let's try to follow what I'm doing, okay? Um, we have a few people here that can help out. If, if anybody gets stuck, just raise your hand so that we can have a few people trying to uh, to help you work it out. And let's see how it goes, okay? So, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to start with an editor. We're going to start with a blank uh, website. Just go to Wix, create a new website, start with a blank website, and we'll create a, uh, a site for uh, menus, for uh, recipes. So choose a template, blank template, and edit. So are we all there? Do we have a, a blank editor? OK. Now, can everybody see OK? I'll zoom in a bit. OK, now uh, let's go right ahead and open code, or enable code, turn on developer tools. And this will give us access to what we're going to be seeing today, collections, repeaters, dynamic pages. We're going to see how we can put all that to use, especially when we have sites with repeating layouts or with a lot of information. For example, we have realtors here that have a lot of properties that they want to sh display on their website. Right now, they're adding them manually, each property on a page, and uh, that can be very time consuming. It's very hard to manage it when you want to remove a property. You have to move them all. Uh, so it's a lot easier with Wix code because what we can do with Wix code, with these are the, the very basics of Wix code. We can use collections, which are tables, very much like a spreadsheet, very much like an Excel spreadsheet, which I'm sure you've all used before. So we can use those tables to aggregate information into fields. And then we can easily display that in any way we want so that we can very easily manage it. OK, let's see how that works. So we're going to start by creating a collection. A collection is that table, like it's spreadsheet. So under this database section, by the way, this whole section appears after we enable code. OK, once we went to the code menu and turned on the developer tools, we'll see this tree here on the left. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new collection. I'm going to call it Recipes. Now, one thing to uh, notice with Wix code and code in general is that it's very touchy about case, about lowercase and uppercase. Uh, sorry, could you close the door? Uh, thanks. There's some noise coming in. Right. So it's very particular about lowercase and uppercase. So we have to remember if we're using lowercase or uppercase. When I create a collection, I like to give it a, a first uh, uh, uppercase letter, and then everything else lowercase, like this. You can choose your own way, but just try to be consistent. Remember what you did and try to be consistent. It'll make it easier for you whenever you need to access it. So. Recipes, it's, I think it's best for now if you follow what I do, and so you use a capital R, uh, and create the collection. Once we do that, we get an empty collection. The empty collection by default has a title field, and now we can add whatever fields and whatever information that we want here. Again, very much like Excel. So let's see how we do that. Um, Let's say we're uh, we're gonna punch in some recipes. So let's put a recipe for my favorite dish, which is lasagna. Not that I would know how to start preparing one, but uh, uh, so I've entered the title, and now I want to 
enter another field, let's create an image field. So I'll call it image with a capital I. And now you'll see before I add it, there's a field type. Okay, there's a drop down for field type. And here I'm going to select naturally image. Okay. So this is going to be a lasagna image. Uh, now I want you to notice that there's a there's a field key. This field key is automatically generated, and it's basically it's usually the same as I gave the name to the field or the title to the field, but in lowercase. This is what we're going to use when we want to access this field from the code. We'll see that later. Okay. So uh, we're adding the image, the image field, and we can go right away and add an image. Okay. I don't know if we have a lasagna image in the free uh, Wix. Let's see. We do. <laughs> so now we have a title and we have an image. Let's add a description field. And that should be enough for now. Description. This is a text field, so I have nothing to change here. I just add it. And I'll just call it my favorite dish. Now, let's see what we can do with it. Ah, but wait. First, let's add two more dishes so that we have a list and not just one item. And then we can see how it shows in a page when we add a repeater. So let's add pasta. Plenty of those. And meatballs. enough. Okay. So we have three items and we can display them. Now, till now, what I had to do to display those items is I had to create a page and then start putting them in manually, one on top of the other, and I have to be very careful to position them correctly so it doesn't look crooked, crooked, etc. Let's see what I can do now. So, uh, let's add a page for this. Add a page called uh, everything. Because later we're going to categorize them. Okay, but for now let's just create one index page with everything on it. All the uh, all the recipes. Okay, so we have this page, and now I'm going to add two things. First of all. What we want to do is we want to display information from the collection. Okay, we've created a collection. We've put information into that table, into that collection. We want to display that information on the screen over here. So what we need is we need a connector first between the collection and the page. And that connector is called a data set. Okay, so we're adding a data set. Now, this data set is something that only we see in the editor. It's only there so that we can control the data set to, so we can configure that connection. But our users are not going to see this component. Okay, so we can just drag this component aside. We can put it over here just so it's not in our way. Okay, and again, the users are not going to see this component. So we can click on Manage Data Set and we're going to choose a collection. And the collection we have only one collection right now, and that's what we want. We want recipes. Okay? And we don't need to touch anything else right now. So now this connector is ready to make this connection between the collection and what we're going to be displaying on the page. Now, to display this on the page, we're going to add something else from the lists and grids section. Okay? Again, this is a section that we'll only see once we have the code turned on. Okay, otherwise it's not available. 
So in this section, we have repeaters. These are repeaters, different kinds of repeaters. Let's take this cut, this first repeater, and just add it to the page. Now what we can see here is that we have something with a repeating kind of layout, okay? It's going to continue to repeat. We have the three first ones, but we'll have more coming. And if we narrow this down, then we see the three are shown as two and then one below them. Uh, we can leave it like this now. And we can control whatever is visible in each of these boxes. So now we want to display recipes. Okay, it's showing us demo information. In this case, just information about uh, locations in Greece. But we want to connect this to the collection. Let's see how simple that is. You see this little icon here? This icon represents a database. To some, it looks like a stack of uh, pancakes or albums. Uh, let's click it and choose the data set. Okay, because we might have more than one data set on page. So we need to choose the data set, in this case, the recipes data set that we've just connected. And I've clicked on the image. So I'm connecting the image, in this case, to the image field. Okay? So again, if I didn't have this yet, I click on the image here. I make sure that the image is selected. I click on the database icon, looks like a stack of pancakes, and I choose the image field, okay, the image field from the collection that we've created. Okay, now right now, it's still showing us demo information. We can change this information, but there's no need to, because that's not what the user is going to see. This is just demo information for the editor. Once we preview, for now, we only touch the image. Okay, we didn't touch any other field. So all the rest of the information is not going to change. But the image should. And let's see. One of the basic concepts about coding in general, not just in Wix, is to take baby steps. So we just did a little something. We created a connector, we added a list, and we connected the image to the corresponding field. Let's see if that works. So let's hit preview. And this is what I was hoping to get. So, as you can see, the textual information is unchanged. We didn't do anything for that to change. But the images are the images that we've selected in the collection. So, does everybody have that on their preview now? Is this working for everyone? Still showing the shit. Okay, so, great. Um, so, we're going to move on, but someone will try to help whoever uh, is not there yet. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back to the editor, and let's connect a few of the other fields. We have actually two other fields to connect. So let's connect the text, the title. OK, let's broaden it a little, along with its background. So uh, what those? Do it without. Uh, so here, I'm going to click the database collection again. I, I selected the text. Okay, make sure you're selecting the text, not the background. I'm selecting the text, and I'm hitting the connect to data database icon. And now I'm going to choose naturally the title field. Okay. Now this field we don't re need right now, so let's just delete it and let's put the description here so I'm going to do the same thing with the description there we go I'm going to remove these just simply selecting them and deleting them and I don't need all this height now so I can uh, shrink the container a little bit okay and let's try to hit preview now And there we go. We have everything that we had in the collection displayed now on the page. Now, for just three items, it would probably have been easier for me to just put them on the page. 
But the idea is that with this, it's going to be a lot more easy for me to manage 20 or 200 or 2,000 items. Okay, and mind you, I can also import them. So if I already have them listed elsewhere, I can turn them into a CSV table and upload that into this collection. Okay, so it can save me a lot of time. Uh, so this is the very basic use of a collection and repeater. Now, let's go a little forward. Let's add categories to these uh, dishes, okay? So here in the collection, one thing I could do is I could add a field called category, and I could type in categories like main, dessert, etc. But it's better if I don't type in the categories, but I create a separate table for that, a separate collection, and I connect them. And why is that? Why is it better for me not to type it in? Does anybody have any suggestions? Use the, the second collection to create like a page for uh, for dessert or for excellent. So I can create a master detail view, and I can have additional information on each category. Okay. Or what change else? It, change it in one spot. It'll update everything. That's right. Changing one place will update everything, and it'll help me avoid typos. Okay, so because if I if I just use you know typing in text like main or dessert, I might mistakenly write dessert the wrong way and it won't show up and I won't know why. So it's better in this kind of case to create another collection as we will now. Uh, sorry, not another uh, entry but another collection. So here there's a plus sign next to the database on this tree. New collection. And I'll call it Categories, again with a capital C. OK, now the categories have a title. So let's create the few categories we need initially. We have a main dish, and we have an entree, and we have a dessert. That's a three-course meal. Um, now we can go back to the recipes, and we can create another field, which is going to be a reference field to this new collection. So does everybody have the new collection already? OK. So I'm creating another field, but I'm not going to click on Add yet. OK, bear with me. So I'm creating another field, and I'm going to call it um, Category. And now I'm going down to field type. And the very first type I have here is reference. I choose reference. And then I get some other options open up to me. And now I can choose which collection this refers to. So this is going to refer to the collection called categories, which we just created. Here I have another checkbox for if this is a multi-item collection. So what is a multi-item collection? Sometimes we want to associate multiple uh, entries from the other collection here. Okay, So this is not the case. In this case, it's not going to be a multi-item collection uh, reference. But a good example would be if we were using tags. Okay, And we could use tags, for example, for, for the same recipe's intention. We could use tags, for example, for ingredients. Okay, and then we can create a collection with ingredients like uh, pasta, milk, eggs, and we can have multiple ingredients showing up on each of these items. Okay, but we're not going to go there yet. So, we've created a reference field. We're we're referencing the newly created categories collection, and that's it. We're leaving it as a not as a multiple item collection uh, reference, and we're adding. Now, you'll notice that we have this new field, and we have a little drop-down arrow, which means we can select which, which of these courses each of these dishes belongs to. I have an empty one here, so let's fill out a dessert. Let's create a chocolate mousse, however you spell that. Uh, Uh, 
sure I misspelled something. Ah, that must be my collection. This will do. So now the category for this is going to be dessert, and for all the others is going to be main. That's enough for sample jet data, just so that we can see what we're getting. So we should now each have four dishes in the recipe collection. One of them is a dessert, and the three others are main. Now, if we go back to that page we've created that we called everything, and we preview, we're still going to get everything. We're going to get five dishes because we, this here we didn't filter. Okay, we didn't create any kind of filter that shows us different uh, courses or categories. Now, let's go back to the editor. And let's go back to the categories collection. And just as Maya suggested earlier, because we've created a collection for these categories, we can now add additional information. Let's just add a picture so that we can create a category page. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So, uh, oh, and that's a good idea to save. Let's save. Let me see. Recipes. Is everybody saved? Okay. So I'm adding just another field that I'll call image, and I'll change it to an image type. And I've added it. And I'll just use some example image. Uh, this was an entree salad. This could look like an entree, an example entree. And Cake for dessert and I'll go with my favorite lasagna for the main dish again. Okay, so now we have the three categories and we have an image to go with each one of them so that we can create a category page. We can create a page showing desserts or showing main uh, courses, etc. There seems to be a problem here with my editor, so uh, let me just save and reload. Is everyone following so far? Little Sorry? Little okay, can someone uh, help out here? Okay, 
So we don't have much more time, so actually I want to look at first at dynamic pages now. Uh, so we've seen how we create a, uh, a repeater, which is on a certain page, we want to show uh, multiple instances of the same kind of information, okay, like properties or like recipes on the same page, a list. Another case is like if, if we have a, uh, an e-commerce website, we have a list of the products, and when we click on a product, we get a product page, we get a full page about the product, okay? So that's another kind of dynamic content that we can create and associate with the collections. So that when I'm looking at the everything page, okay, let's preview that for a moment, when I'm looking at the at all the recipes, I will see a list of the recipes, but then I want to be able to click on a recipe. Okay, here I'm not going to see the whole explanation of how I'm going to create a lasagna. But when I click on the lasagna, I'm expecting to go to a big page with a big page a picture of lasagna and with the whole explanation of how to make one. Uh, so let's see how we do that. Okay? So what we're gonna do is here on the recipes collection, uh, we have this gear icon, and we're going to add a dynamic page. There are several ways to do this. This is one of them. So I'm adding a dynamic page for the recipes collection. It's an item page. Okay, it's going to be a page about one item, one recipe that we're displaying. Now, I can set exactly what I want the URL to look like, okay? I'm usually going to go with the default, okay? Because usually the default is going to be something like this. Whatever the domain is, followed by, in this case, recipes, which is the name of the collection, followed by the relevant field, which is title. So that if it's a recipe for, for lasagna, the URL is going to look like this. It's going to be recipes slash lasagna, which is a perfect URL to have, okay? If, if any of you been uh, looking into SEO, that's a very good kind of URL you want to have, it, rather than having an ID, for example. Okay, we want something that's readable in the URL. So usually we're just going to go with the default. And I create the page. Now, what we get here, we get a blank page, but we have this on it. We have a data set on it. Now, remember what a data set is? Data set is the connector to the collection. In the previous page, we had to create a data set. We added a data set on our own. In this case, since it's a dynamic page, it's already created with a data set in place. And why is that? Because this page, as opposed to other pages, okay, the, the everything page has its name and it has its URL. The URL will be everything. Here, it's one page in the editor but it, in essence, it's a lot of pages coming from the different rows in the collection. So this is one page representing a lot of pages. So this data set is what connects the URL that we'll be using to the relevant row in the collection. Okay, we'll see that in use in a moment. So what I want to do now is I want to create this page. This is an item page showing me a lasagna or a pasta or whatever one item on how to how to create that dish. So we're going to add a title, text field. Let's add heading one. Did I add it? Heading one. Drag it here and connect it using the connect to data icon. Okay, I'm clicking on this. I already have the recipes data set selected for me. And I'm choosing the title. And now I'll add an image. And I'll just add any image. Really doesn't matter what image I use here. It's going to be replaced by the image from the collection. And I click the database icon again, and I connect this to the image field. And now, let's preview. Let's save first, and then let's preview. So 
I got the chocolate mousse. And I got a new little uh, thing over here, a new uh, control, which is this lets us see the different rows that we have in this collection so that we can preview whatever we want to preview on this page. So I can see how my lasagna is going to look on this page. So I check lasagna here, and I can flip through them just to see, for example, if one of them has a very long title, like the chocolate mousse, which I also think I have probably a, a typo in. But I can see that I don't like the way it's displayed, so I can go back to the editor, and I can give this a longer, uh, a wider uh, place, so that when I preview chocolate mousse, it might still be with a typo, but at least it'll be in one line. Okay? So, now we have an item page. To this page, now I can add a description of the ingredients, the uh, instructions on how to create, how to do the dish. Okay, I didn't create those fields in the collection yet. And we're not going to do that now, but I think you've got the basic idea. Okay, I can add a text field here, which is called uh, uh, ingredients, and I can add another one with, uh, with how to do it. Yeah. Is there a limit to the um, number Size? of characters you can have in that field, like for ingredients or description? I don't remember if there's a limit, mm -hmm. but it, if there is, it's pretty big. Pretty big. Yeah. So, uh, so usually you're not going to hit a problem there. And if there is, uh, I'll show you a few very important resources for anyone using Wix code, and you can find answers there. And, you, and if you don't find answers there, you can hunt me down and find mm -hmm. answers for me. <laughs> um, okay. So we're going to go back to the everything page. Now, what I want to do now is I want to connect between this page to the item page. So I want to make, make it possible when I see the list of the different recipes to click on a recipe and then get the actual ingredients and instructions on how to do it. So what I'm going to do for that, I'm going to select the image field here. OK making sure I'm on the image. I have the image selected. I'm going to click this Connect to Data icon again. Uh, one thing I want to draw your attention to, do you see that it's green now? Mm -hmm. When it's green, it means that it's already connected. Before it was connected, when it was just demo data, and the, when I, if you remember, if I clicked on Preview before I connected the title and the description, I just got the demo title and description. So this icon was black back then, OK? Mm -hmm. Once I connect it, it turns green. So I know it's on. I know it's connected. But even though it's connected, I can still do some more tweaks on it. So I'm going to click this icon. So I get this dialog, and I see that it's connected to the image field. But I also have link connects to. OK, right now, it wasn't connected to anything. So if I hit the image, nothing happened. Now, if I'm going to hit this, and I'm going to choose recipes title, you'll notice that the new dynamic page that I've created here is called recipes and title in parentheses, because title is the selector for which recipe I'm showing. So I'm going to, I'm going to choose that over here, dynamic pages. And now I'm going to preview. And let's see what happens now. So I got all my recipes in one page. And I can click on one of them. I'm going to click on the lasagna. And I got to the item page. OK? So again, I'm going back. I uh, don't know if I go back here. It will get me the desired results. So I'll go here. Actually, I can just add a, uh, a menu to the header. That will make it easier for me. Right. So previewing again. Home. Oh, uh, no. Everything. Clicking on the pasta image, and I get the page for the pasta. Okay, and of course I'll add the description, I'll add the ingredients, and I can add a video, I can add anything I want. So uh, I think we're out of time. So this was a basic demonstration showing us how to create a collection, how to connect that collection to the page with a data set, and then how to either use a repeater to show many items on a single page, 
or use a dynamic page to show a full-blown page per one item. Okay, so thanks. That'll be all for the recording, and we can continue.